Wow, Shmuppachinos, we did it! 2,000 subscribers in the Shmup community. It's basically a silver play button. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to my 2K sub party. I'm genuinely very proud of how far this stupid little channel has come. Thank you everyone for watching my replays and commentary. It really does mean a lot. You know guys, over the years I've had quite a few people ask me things like, Eric Pearl, how do I get better at shmups? How do I learn them more efficiently? And can you please increase my rations for the month? Well, first off, <laughs> no. But this is something I've been thinking about for quite some time. So instead of making the 200th beginner shmup guide where I tell you that your hitbox is small, and bombs exist, and how to stream bullets by tapping the fucking direction button 20 times, we're just gonna throw all that out the window. This is a shmup guide for intermediate players. Ones that know the basics, ones that really want to pursue higher goals in the genre, and really want to get better at these games. This educational straight to home DVD video consists of five chunks, all of which are equally critical in improving at shmups as a whole. We'll start off with my own personal learning methodology, the steps I myself take when I first sit down with a game with the intention of once he's seeing it, along with the more nitty gritty decisions I go through in my head, such as what character do I use, where do I plan my resources, and how do I calculate my risk. Next, we open curtain number two to unveil creating strategies. We're talking speed kills, standing cum regs, HUD lineups, anything along these lines. Basically, if there's a way to make a section easier, you'll learn what to look for. Down in the depths of the Discord channels, I will yell at you for about four or five minutes on why watching replays is actually really fucking important, and how just sitting down and watching someone else play could give you a fresh new perspective on the game. I also reassure you that it is not cringe to watch replays, and people who say otherwise have no clears. Back to actually playing games, next up is more advanced techniques. I cover some stuff that you put in your back pocket, stuff that you can sprinkle in your play here and there such as abusing the dead zone, bullet doppler, and also manipulating the damage caps. Last and actually the most important is the mental game. Shmups are really just an exercise in your own mental fortitude, and a lot of spreading shmup players actually fucking suck at managing their own mental state and motivation. Do I have free will? I go over some tips that me and others take advantage of when managing our own motivation and keeping ourselves in peak gaming shape. God, that's fucking cringe. Now that we have the intro out of the way, let's carry on to the main event. How to improve at shmups. Intermediate label. You know, like those Mountain Dew cans, the green and black label? Short disclaimer, if you watch this video wrong and you don't get results, it's actually just not my fault. Just do it again. You'll all be pleased to hear that I generally approach all shmups with the same spotlight. After doing like 200 plus arcade clears, you get kind of into this sort of groove when it comes to learning things. The number one thing first I do for every shmup I boot up for the first time is to just try every ship or every weapon type. You know, take them for a spin, right? Like how you would with your orange Nissan 350Z. I take mental notes of every attribute. Damage. Stage control. Bombs. Range. How they're affected by auto fire. And I then compare and contrast between each choice. So, let's just cover a few examples. Starting with 1943, it sports a single ship type and four weapons. Three-way, auto, shotgun, and shell. If you're a level one petty thief, then you might gravitate towards the shotgun. It's available really early in the game and whoa, holy fuck, he clears bullets. Now this is how you get trapped. The shotgun in 1943 is no super shotgun from Doom 2 but rather it's your scatter gun from Redneck Rampage. Dog shit weapon, basically useless. I will actually just make fun of you if I see you using it. This leaves three weapons, three way, auto, and shell. Let's cover them. Shell has pretty high damage, but it's harder to get and has no range. Auto has no range as well, but it appears a lot more commonly, and with auto fire, it actually just shreds enemies better than shell does. 
This leaves three way. A shot with no real downside. It appears often, good auto fire use, perfectly fine damage, and unmatched stage coverage. Thus, I decide early on that three way is the shot of choice for most of the game. For a different perspective, let's talk about Toho 12. Just fucking kidding. Galuda. Galuda is a pretty good contrast to 1943. Instead of various weapons, we have two characters to choose from here, Tateha or Ageha. On the surface, it seems stupid. It's a bullet hell shmup. Why would I want anything other than a spread shot like DDP? Well, that's what I thought too until I realized that Cave fucking owns and actually gave both characters distinct strengths and weaknesses to give the player a lot more consideration in their choice. Now, there are five elements to consider with each character. Your shot, your laser, Kakase shot, Kakase laser, and the movement speed. Now, Josh, my boy, I'd love to give you that. Okay, huh, is the stronger main shot of the two, but it has the weaker laser. Sporting a 400 horsepower V8 engine, a piss poor Kakase shot, but a monstrous Kakase laser. With high speed, it's clear that Ageha is the pick for a player with a more aggressive playstyle. Tate over here is the polar opposite, with a sporty wide shot and a stronger laser, along with an all leather interior, she has a threatening widescreen piercing Kakase shot, but her Kakase laser is fucking awful. Consider this with a low speed, it's obvious that Tateha is the pick for a player with a more passive playstyle. <clears throat> on to practicing. If a game is on MAME, I play through the game while making save states on various checkpoints of the game. Stage start, mid boss, boss, all of these are save stated to create checkpoints for future practice. And to avoid stress of making these save states, I use my resources through the game at a normal rate. Avoiding the urge to no miss no bomb the entire thing, this allows me to practice segments with less resources, making me become more efficient where I spend them and to sort of emulate a real run setting. Now if you're just sitting there screaming at the monitor, but I'm playing on a port, not cheating on main, just do the same fucking thing. Just set your resources in practice mode, come on. Cool, now that you have safe states of every section that we plan to practice, it's time to think about our resources, you know? Lives and bombs. Where can we spend these without running out of resources early? What sections are scary enough to warrant a bomb use? For my own play, if a section has less than 75% consistency, I plan to use a bomb here. Or, at the very least, be ready to bomb if things go haywire. But then there's how resources are even gained. Some games such as Shikigami no Shiro or Battle Garega will give you resources pretty frequently. In the two cases I mentioned, you gain extra lives every set amount of points, and bombs are given through the stages or when a certain player state is reached. I'm sure many of you can put together the two puzzle pieces and figure out that, wait a second, I can plan these things and go on a spree of resource use to trivialize sections of the game, while still having plenty to use for parts that are actually hard. Last bit about bombing, I know the Toho players are sick of hearing it in the back there. Usually, I think of the entire game resource-wise, and what segments I intend to bomb on or have a high risk of bombing these sections exceed the amount of bombs in the game, or the amount left is near zero, you're probably not ready for runs yet, and you need more practice, man. So, what's a good way to practice? Usually what I do, I play the stages in a row, such as stage 3, then 4, then 5, all in a row. Hard patterns and isolation maybe 10-20 times in a row. Maybe just playing a single stage or boss over and over over the course of an hour to drill in consistency. Basically, the goal with practice is to increase your consistency and confidence for full game runs. While practicing, I keep an open mind and a close eye on various things I can adjust to my routes to earn more freedom and get more confidence. If you're not confident in your play, it's just going to go pretty bad in runs. No, no. Ah. This now concludes my own learning methodology. Some games only take me a few hours to go from literally never playing before to 1cc, but other times it can take quite a bit more. 
everyone's results can vary here, and it's perfectly fine to take longer than expected. Just try to follow this general advice. Fine tune it to your own little needs, and I'm sure you'll win if you just don't complain on Discord for 20 hours a day about how impossible Clown Piece's first non is. Don't do that. You'll need a bit more than just a good learning method, though. To literally no one's surprise fucking ever, you need to actually create good strats to get more consistent. But how can someone do that on their own? Well, to find good strategies requires a different kind of thinking. Remove the monkey from your brain and really sit down and be creative. Okay, if it wasn't obvious, take advantage of every practice option you have here. You'll fucking need it. One of your best buddies for finding cool strats is the HUD. Your score, livestock, timer, everything that never moves is your friend. Hell, you could even use your physical monitor for specific lineups. Hell, this timer here has three digits. Maybe I can line myself up under the hundreds digit for the first wave here, and then the ones digit for the second wave. Oh, this colored border around the playfield has this little dark line at the top. I wonder if I can use that as a safe spot after this mid boss. Shit, that menu button on your CRT never moves. I mean, I hope. You can use that for a rough positioning guideline on this spell card. It doesn't just stop there though. The background is also a buddy. You know, the one that hooked you up with free shit at lunch. There's this rock here that moves down at a fixed rate. Perhaps I can position my options with it and just hold a rapid shot to make this section easier. Every little tank and plane or anything in shmups has the same tricks up their sleeve. They fire their bullets the same way every time. It's important to identify quickly how the enemy actually attacks and how the player can influence it. Some enemies just fire the same pattern the same way every single time at a fixed rate. Possibly there's a gap right in front of it that you can use for a cheesy point blank, or possibly you can line up with its sprite to safe spot it. There's about 250,000 ways bullets can be aimed at the player, but the ones you'll see the most are pixel aimed, rough aimed, and turret aimed. Pixel aimed is mostly in the Toho games, where the bullet trajectory goes right over your position every single time. Rough aimed is where the bullets are aimed kind of in your direction, but some precise lineups can still be made to safe spot them. Turret aimed are when the physical sprite affects the trajectory. And there's really only a handful of angles for it to fire from, based off of the actual physical sprite. And of course, some enemies just fire bullets at a random rate. You'll be expected to handle staters where these tricks are used in combination with other tricks, making you route more intensively to make the most out of the stage. It's pretty cool. Standing comrades, aka safe spots, are ways to approach a segment without any player movement or interaction. Finding these on your own can be quite the pain in the ass if you're going out of your way to look for them. The only easy way to find them yourself is if the stage has predominantly static bullet patterns or enemy patterns. Then it's just a matter of trial and error to figure out the best position and movements to make a low effort stage section. Usually when I end up finding these on my own, it's just out of boredom. I'll sometimes just kind of flop around in the corner and see if I survive. Sometimes it just works, and it's a consistent strategy. It must be noted that sometimes these safe spots only work on certain game states, such as your rank, what direction you're holding, or even what ship you're using. If you find a safe spot, try it from different game states to really be sure of it's consistent. Some people think using safe spots is cheating. I think those people are fucking stupid. Use whatever you want. Don't listen to them. It's time for the polarizing stuff now. Now, of course, you don't need to watch replays to improve. Some people like figuring stuff out on their own, and that's fine. But if you're struggling, just look at a fucking replay. Nobody that actually matters is going to judge your decision. So anyway, time and time and time again, I see so many people whining about how watching replays isn't fun, or it's not in the spirit of the game, and to that I say fucking cope. If you play these games in arcades, a buddy could come up to you and say, whoa dude, I found this really cool way how to not die on the stage 3 boss of Dompachi. So he shows you his cool strat, 
But while he's in stage 2, you also pick up on this cool strat that he does on the three green planes in the midpoint of the stage. That's a cool strat. You two just built off of each other's play. Somewhere down the line, he might even watch you play and think the same thing and apply stuff that he learns from you. Now, of course, if you don't have friends, this might be a bit hard, but, um, uh... Nowadays, it's a lot easier to learn via replays. There are so many amazing players who have uploaded replays for their 1ccs, max consistency clears, scoring, basically anything you could ever want could be online for you to learn from. Do you need to copy monkey frame by frame? Fuck no. But you don't look at replays only once. You look at replays to get a new idea of how to approach a section. If you think watching replays will instantly let you get good at the game, I'll link the DDP 712mm replay below, and I'll wait for one of you fucking schmucks to copy monkey a 700mm 2 all. You have two weeks. Now, there are a few channels that upload runs that are cheating, using save states, slowdown, all that kind of shit, while not publicizing the usage of these tools. Do a bit of research of the videos you're looking for at, before trying to learn things from them. Ask around in communities, and if they're not shitposting, you'll actually get a good answer if the replay is legit or not. As a small side note, the communal effort of players grows at a far greater pace when replays are involved. People learn faster and more efficiently when there are other examples presented in front of them. Someone could get 10 mil in Grega, but then just not know where more score is. He then uploads his replay as he's done with the game. Player B finds new techniques on top of this replay to get 11 mil. Player A then comes back with this new knowledge and gets 12 mil. Players piggyback off each other all the time in this genre. It's one of the most defining features of it. You can even emulate this yourself by just watching your own replays and taking mental notes of where you fuck up and where you survive. Instead of dying in stage 2 over and over and quitting the game. I'm gonna teach you some cool shit now. Now please know, actually fucking listen to me, these tricks are not meant to be your main focus. They're simply little back pocket pieces of techniques and knowledge that you can use when needed. Bottom dragging is, okay can you tell the players stop getting mad about how it's not advanced? Thanks. Bottom dragging is when you hold down at the bottom of the screen while moving left and right to have a slower horizontal movement speed. I use this pretty often when I play on keyboard as it allows me to have a higher level of precision on more bullet dense patterns and it also makes precise safe spots more consistent. On an arcade stick or a controller it might be a little tougher but it'll still work the same. Bullet Doppler effect as explained by Arf here Yeah, you said it, Arf. BDE takes advantage of your projectiles being closer together while moving upwards towards a target. Depending on the game and how it handles shot sprite limits, doing this with a more linear shot can kill enemies slightly faster than if you are at the bottom or up close. Useful when you have a pesky enemy that just has to get off one bullet volley, you might be able to kill it before it gets any of them off. Dead Zone is a staple in quite a few arcade games but predominantly you'll see them in Yagawa's titles. The edges of the screen in some games makes all enemies invincible. While this is a detriment to you, it can actually be spun into a bit of a benefit. Why bother being under the enemy frame one when it doesn't even take damage for a few seconds? Use those other seconds to deal with other threats while moving towards the previously invincible enemy. The dead zone can also be used to push bullet spawners off screen. If the game in question has a scrolling screen, it can actually trivialize some bosses if you can take advantage of it. Damage caps are a fucking nightmare. Losing damage just because you're hitting the boss with a bunch of stuff at once? Fucking annoying! Some games have a per frame limit such as Zunes games, while others have attacks that do more damage than others, and you need to ensure that the lower one doesn't take precedent. Something that is far more prevalent than anything else mentioned here but is something I don't see people do is fucking bullet sealing. Some enemies, when you get close to them, won't fire shots at you anymore. Taking advantage of this for sneaky speed kills and safety is vital for a lot of higher level play. Keep in mind, sometimes the sealing mechanics can be wonky as fuck, as in Gun Nail, the bullet seal hitbox extends infinitely horizontally, 
or the bullet seal range can be shorter depending on your rank. Memorize the level. Oh, yeah, fuck oh, you. Don't memorize oh, yes, oh, if, if the oh, level's not oh, beat by pure skill, the game dogs it and you're Here is the most important part for players that actually want to get good at this genre. As much as a lot of people are too pussy to admit it, shmups are a huge mental game. While they do require pretty intense mechanical skill and knowledge, the looming thing behind every player is one's mental state. It's actually really fucking easy to let yourself get overwhelmed by bad condition, especially if you try to force yourself to play in a bad mental state. You could be practicing for hours, playing for hours, game over into stage 2 and just getting so fucking mad, but it's not because you're getting worse, it's because you're in a shit mental state. Perhaps you just had a bad day at work, maybe you got made fun of at college, maybe someone replied to your discord post with a soy jack, you didn't get enough sleep, you feel like shit, maybe you're fucking hungry, all these things affect your mind, and since shmups require mechanical skill and attention, Things that affect the mind, affect the shmups. Let's just go through a basic list of what to do to be in a decent condition. Have a good sleep schedule, don't be bath. Sleep at proper hours and sleep for correct amounts of time. Also, use a good pillow. Make sure you're not dehydrated or starving or anything. If you're on an hour five of gaming and you just can't, can't stop, stop, just end the fucking credit, just get something to eat. Here's an obvious one. Don't play when sick, because that's just fucking stupid. Just relax when you're under the weather. If you're in a shit mood, you're probably also gonna play like shit and beat yourself up more often. And honestly, some days can just be bad days. Take a break for the day and try again tomorrow. Now, there is a flip side to the mental game, and it's your motivation and your drive. First things first, stop beating yourself up. If you do a run and you game over, don't tell yourself, man, I fucking suck, I game over it, I should fucking kill myself. No, think of the positives of the credit that you just played. Maybe you did a boss pattern for the first time without bombing. Maybe you had a good score. Hell, even just reaching the last stage, that's pretty good too. Managing your motivation is basically a 1cc in itself. As you improve as a player, you'll be faced with plenty of demotivation situations in the genre. Being stuck in stage 1 for extended periods of time, game over into final patterns, struggling to learn routes, it can just tug on you bit by bit. But as with most things, you can get stronger against these negative feelings. You just need to keep your mental state high, don't let the game get to you that much, it's okay to struggle as long as you're truly enjoying it. Which brings us to the next bit. I see a lot of fucking new and old players having this issue. Motivation and enjoyment should be the number one focus for all players. You should take time when evaluating yourself. Why am I going for this goal? Is it because I have fun? Is it because I'm enjoying the game? Or is it for clout? To look impressive? Quite a few players have misplaced motives, resulting in a lot more frustrated play. If you're playing to look impressive, I got news for you buddy. Playing to impress will not get you far. This is a pretty common noob trap actually, playing to look cool. People won't be fucking wooed by you because we already got the big dog super players on the block. Trying to chase the idea of being a big dog will only result in frustration. Take a step back and focus on truly enjoying the game, instead of looking cool and trying to farm social credit. So all in all, keep your mind up high, play for enjoyment, and just take care of yourself. The results will follow after that. And that concludes my video of how to improve at shmups at a more intermediate level. I was told to put in some proper outros to my video or else um, something would happen to me. Uh, um, but truly, thank you everyone for watching this silly little channel to get me to 2000 submarine sandwiches. I hope you all enjoy what else I have in store for both replays and commentaries. I'll see you all in the next fantastic object.